Okay, guys, welcome to today's second in our uh, series of online education sessions for 2020, the new decade. Um, if you can hear me loud and clear, can you type a Y in the chat box? You should also be able to see a introduction screen to Tickmill, we want traders to succeed. So if you can type a Y in the chat box just to confirm that you can, uh, you can hear me and you can see that, that would be great. Thank you very much. Okay, as always, we are going to pay attention to the risk involved in Forex trading and we're just going to once again familiarize ourselves with the uh, risk disclaimer. Just give you a, a second or two to review that. And like I always say, you are helping to mitigate that risk by taking and participating in these education sessions and taking advantage of the, uh, of the information that's on hand here. Okay, so before we jump into the, uh, the meat of today's session, I'll just give you uh, an introduction as to, to who I am. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with me, but for those who aren't, um, my name is Patrick Munley. After I graduated from King's College London, I went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup. <clears throat> I then moved on to explore my passion for markets. I researched, developed, tested and implemented a robust trading plan. This trading plan was underpinned by a rigorous risk management strategy. This plan has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through my managed account service. This service has delivered annual positive returns since inception. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also been personally mentoring over 100 private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in helping them to develop technical, and more importantly, the mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. Over the years, I've consulted to numerous brokers and trading education brands, contributing written content, webinars, and live presentation content on a range of topics from market analysis through to trading strategy development and execution. In addition to my fund management, which is largely automated and now um, primarily an end of day process, um, and my private mentoring, I also manage a proprietary trading team for a company called Littlefish FX. I'm currently the resident market expert, um, providing market and trade analysis to a leading, uh, to the leading online brokerage firm, Tickmill, as most of you all know. Most recently, I've been retained as head of trading and trader education for an emerging trader education brand called FX Career Swap, where we offer education underpinned by the uh, offering of trading funded accounts and this is primarily focused to emerging retail trading talent. So that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. And now we want to move into uh, the discussion that I want to have with you today. And that is about multi time frame momentum. Multi time frame analysis is simply the process of looking at a financial instrument of the same price but on different time frames. Remember, every financial instrument that you look at exists on several time frames. So this could be a daily chart, an hourly chart, a 15 minute chart, or even a one minute chart. This means that different traders can have different opinions on how a pair is trading and both can be completely correct, which is incredibly important and something we'll go into a little bit more detail on. But before we get into the, um, the key aspects of, of multi time frame, let's unpack the idea really of, of what momentum is. <clears throat> so what we want to, to really grasp here is, is how that's driving, um, driving the markets. Now, from a scientific perspective, um, from the physics perspective specifically, it refers to the quantity of motion that an object has. A sports team, for example, that is on the move has momentum. Momentum can be defined as mass in motion. All objects have mass, so if, uh, so if an object is moving, then it has momentum. But for us today, what we want to focus on, what it means for us as traders. 
Momentum in technical analysis refers to the overall rate of change in the price of an asset. Momentum is calculated simply by taking the slope of the trend line, which tracks the price levels of an asset over time. Traders often take momentum as a measure of the volume of the market. If prices are changing rapidly in the market, meaning that momentum is high, it's likely that a large number of traders are buying or selling to push price to change in that direction. As such, extremely high or extremely low values for momentum are taken as signs that an asset may be overbought or oversold. If momentum reaches an extreme high, the asset is overbought, and if momentum reaches an extreme low, the asset is considered to be oversold. So buy and sell signals are ostensibly generated when momentum reaches extremes. Converse, so for a, a, a sell signal is generated when momentum reaches an extreme high and a buy signal when momentum reaches an extreme low. Traders consider this to be a leading indicator of price behavior of a given asset and also defining the overall character of that asset. So now we have an understanding of um, what momentum is. Let's unpack in a little bit more detail why we look at multi time frames. When we refer to multi time frames, as I've just stated, we are looking at charts with various price data as defined by the period of the chart. So on the screen at the moment, there's a daily chart, a four hour chart, and a one hour chart. Each one of these represents the same price movement, but we are seeing them as per the candles that make up the data for that particular time frame. Now, what's incredibly important, when you're starting out as a trader or um, when you are just getting going and you're, you have a little less experience than those who have, um, who have been around the markets for, for a longer period of time, what less experienced traders tend to do is they tend to focus on the lower time frames. Why do they focus on the lower time frames? Well, they perceive initially that the lower time frames give more trading signals. The charts move quicker, and when people are first introduced to the, to the idea of getting involved with trading, they are under what I believe to be the misapprehension that trading is an adrenaline-fueled experience. That when we're looking at our screens, if we're not seeing the charts move up and down quickly, then we must be doing something wrong. Then this can't be trading. But the reality is that trading is not, should not be an adrenaline-fueled experience. And one of the ways that ultimately we overcome that initially is by learning to look at the higher time frame charts. The higher time frame charts, obviously, the, the data takes longer to print. So a candle, depending upon the time frame, weekly, daily, or even monthly, can obviously takes a long time to print, and the charts tend to, they, they tend to have a much slower feel to them. And that tends to, ironically, um, be less attractive to people who are new to, to the trading world and the trading experience, because they initially people are attracted to that movement on the screens. They want to see that movement because they believe the movement is what creates um, these great wealth opportunities for them. When in reality, what we are much better off doing when we're just getting going and we don't have it, a, a, a huge amount of market experience is that we're much better on these higher time frames because they tend to cancel out a lot of the noise that you see on the lower time frames. And it's far easier for us to identify the dominant trend using the higher time frame. So what we want to do in our trading is we want to do the absolute opposite of what we've got on the screen at the moment. We don't want to be defining the trend, the, the dominant trend in the market, by looking at a lower time frame chart. We want to move out to the higher time frames. We want to get perspective. Perspective in trading is everything. If we're able to define a dominant trend on a higher time frame, then that dominant trend is ultimately going to feed through and dictate the overall trend on the lower time frame. Okay, so here's an example. On the screen at the moment, you can see 
a huge you can see that there are three levels um, you can see that there are basically three levels of price action um, we have a 15 minute chart and you can see the zigs and the zags are, are much um, much more are, are much more defined on the lower time frame we then take that up to a 60 minute chart and we can start to see that the um, that the, the that zigging and zagging that we see on the lower time frame is starting to be a bit more smoothed out so we're starting to be able to able to define what the trend is with a little bit more ease just by eyeballing the charts and then what we've got is uh is uh, then we've got this the higher time frame which in this instance is a four hour chart and that is showing us a much smoother chart and so what we can start to see now is that by looking at these higher time frames, it is much easier, just even from an eyeball level, for us to define what the higher time frame trend is. And then we can equally see that on the lower time frames, there are trading opportunities to align ourselves with the higher time frame trend. So, this is, giving us a, this is giving us an idea of how we can start to use the higher time frame to dictate the trend and the lower time frame to enter with the dominant trend. Does that make sense to everyone? Can I get a Y in the chat box, please, if that makes sense to everyone? So what we're, initially what we're talking about here in using this multi-time frame analysis is we are looking to define a dominant trend on a higher time frame and then we are looking to use the lower time frame to enter in accordance with the higher time frame trend. Okay. So now what we want to think is how can we how can we add a tool that will help us more clearly define with an objective nature the momentum trend. And what we're going to use for that ultimately is what I, is what's referred to as the stochastic RSI. So what is the stochastic RSI? Well, the relative strength index is a price following line that attempts to display the strength of movement within the associated trends. Okay, so an RSI is, is, is referred to as the relative strength index and it's a line on the chart that is, attempts just as a single line to demonstrate what the current trend is. Okay. The stochastic RSI is actually an oscillator. As the name suggests, it's an indicator of an indicator. The standard stochastic monitors relationships between closing prices and the range. Um, Felix, what you've asked, um, please repeat where we enter on the lower time frame. Um, we haven't, I haven't got into that yet, Felix. What I was simply trying to show you on, with that prior slide was how the lower time frame feeds into the higher time frame trend. So I have, we haven't got to the details yet. Don't worry, they're coming. Um, but thanks for the question. So just to be clear here, the stochastic RSI, as the name suggests, is an indicator of an indicator. The standard stochastic monitors relationships between closing prices and the range. The stochastic RSI monitors the RSI values and their relationship over a period. So we can use this to give us additional objectivity when we are trying to identify the shorter term momentum in line with the longer term momentum. So now what we're going to look at is I'm going to show you how you can set up charts that can easily show you what the higher time frame momentum is and what the lower time frame momentum is. Now, for the purposes of, of these examples, as we go forward now through the remainder of this session, I am using on the left hand side of the screen, you will see a, um, a 60 minute chart. So each candle on the left hand side of the screen demonstrates 60 minutes of price data. Okay. On the right hand side of the screen, you will see a daily time frame. So each candlestick there is four, uh, 1,440 minutes of data. Okay, so we have 60 minutes of data per candle on the left hand side, 1,440 on the right hand side. So we have a six, an hourly chart and a daily chart. 
We are using the daily chart, the momentum on the daily chart to define where the higher time frame trend is. Okay? So we are only going to trade in accordance with the higher time frame. We do not want to take trades in the opposite direction to the higher time frame momentum. Let me just see if we can. Okay. So now that we've got, now that we can see how we want to set up the chart, so that we can quickly see where the higher time frame momentum is and where the lower time frame momentum is. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at some simple rules. So as I suggested, we're only going to trade in the direction of the higher time frame momentum. We enter at or near the end of a correction on the lower time frame. As we proceed now through the, through the examples I'm going to share with you, I'll show you how I define what a correction is. And what we're doing is we're using that higher time frame. So if we go back to this slide, we're using that in this instance, the four hour would be the equivalent to us, our daily chart. And then the 60 minute chart is what we will be using to enter on that daily time frame. So we're going to identify using our momentum indicator, the stochastic RSI, where the higher time frame trend is. And then, like I say, we will use our hourly chart to enter with that higher time frame trend. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use a logical entry management and ex trade entry, trade management and exit strategy. So we have three simple uh, rule segments here that we're going to adhere to. And, you know, this in, in any strategy that you're looking to trade or any strategy you're looking to apply to the market or any method you're looking to apply to the market, it's incredibly important from the get go, as you will know um, um, from my prior sessions, that you apply a rule set. Why do you have to apply a rule set? Because we as human beings will often fall foul of the raw emotions of fear and greed. What can't fall foul of fear and greed is a documented rule set or trade plan. So once, we have, once we've identified a market method or approach that seems to have an edge or a high probability outcome over an extended series of trades, so I'm not interested in whether or not the next trade is a winner or even if the next five trades are a winner, but over a hundred trades, I want, to, I, want to, I want over a hundred trades to be able to see that I win enough trades that if those trades are profitable, my overall return is positive, okay? So to do that, to effectively do that, unlike every other less experienced person who comes to the markets and just looks at the charts and thinks, right, this has gone too high, it's going to come down, or this has gone too low, it's going to come up. We are always, when we want to take our trading from the level of just playing at the markets to being professional in our approach, Every time we're going to apply a strategy, we want to under, underpin that with a rules-based approach. And like I said at the beginning, with my own trading strategies, all of that then combined with a risk management strategy. Okay? So let's, uh, let's go through now and we're going to look at some examples. Now, what I could have, what I could have choose, chose to do here is just cherry pick um, examples from the charts that look great. Um, that's not what I'm interested in doing. I'm not, you know, the reality of trading, as hopefully most of you know now, is that you, losses are an inevitable part of the game. It's a business cost. It is a business cost. Trading, when done successfully, is a business. And for it to be a business, there have to be associated costs. Okay? And that one of the costs in trading is, is, tra is losses. You, there is no strategy on this planet that is delivering 90, 95, 99% winning trades. If, if, you are, if you are looking at a strategy and the only way you're defining its success is by the amount of trades it's winning, you're, you're doing this wrong. What you've got to look for in a trading strategy is profitability. Okay, could, because believe me, a trading you, you could a trade there, is, there are trading strategies out there that only win 40% of the time. So every out of every 10 trades, only four of them are winners. You can have six trade losing trades in a row and four winners, and those four winners can mean that the strategy is ultimately profitable if the risk reward parameters are correct. 
And that's what, we, that's what we're going to look at now. When we look at these examples, we're going to see how we apply the multi-time frame analysis, looking at momentum for an objective signal, and then we're going to see how we use risk-reward to make sure that even if we only win four out of ten trades, overall we're profitable. Okay. Now, like I said, I'm not, I haven't cherry-picked. What I've actually done here, most of you will know, I provide a daily market outlook um, on the Tipmill blog. I also provide a chart of the day. And what I've pulled off here is a couple of the daily market outlooks and a bunch of charts of the day where I've highlighted setups. And I'm going to show you now in this next section how you can use those charts of the day and how you can use this multi time frame analysis to actually benefit from those charts of the day uh, potential setups. Okay, so here's the first one. Pretty recently, this is the uh, a daily market outlook I posted on the 6th of January. And on the chart on the left hand side, the blue lines you can see are actually uh, are actually bar their bar patterns. So those 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 candlesticks hadn't printed when I posted that chart. You can see the price there. The price is uh, around trading around 111.60. And in my forecast for that day, due to the pattern that had set up, I identified the potential for prices to rise above 112 before they would start to sell off again. Now what we're going to look is we're going to look at how you could have traded that using the multi time frame momentum strategy. So the, the, charts, uh, the charts that you can see on the left hand side is our, um, is our intraday chart, that's our hourly chart. And the chart you can see on the right hand side is our, um, our daily chart. So that's defining our, our, our momentum trends. And what we'd had occur in that, um, in that section was that um, we had a reversal on the daily chart as defined by where I've drawn the Fibonacci retracements on the, um, on the screen at the moment. Let me just see, I'm having an issue with the pointer here. Bear with me, guys, and let me just see if I can get this, uh, this pointer working. Uh, let's see, pointer. Okay, let me see. No. Uh, bear with me, guys. Let's just see. Um, no, there seems to be, um, unfortunately, an issue with the pointer here. Uh, let me just see if I can, I can do to change that. No, we've got a, an issue with the pointer. That's uh, that's frustrating. Okay, so the, um, the you can see here on the left hand side we have had a decline. The decline after the momentum had rolled over. If we look just at the start of 2020 on the right hand side screen, you can see the stochastic RSI. The green line has crossed over the red line from above the 80 level. Okay, and so now what we've got so now what we've got is a bearish momentum on the higher time frame. So this is depicted by where I've drawn the fib retracement tool on the left hand side. So we can see that prices have declined. The decline has impulsive qualities. What do I mean by impulsive qualities? Well, the price action as we decline there has not overlapped. When prices fall away like they have and we don't get any overlapping in the swings, that tends to tell us that we have a new trend developing. Now, in the correction that follows, after we get, after we get that low in place, there's a co correction that follows and prices trade back up above the 112 as I'd anticipated, and then we get a momentum reversal on the lower time frame. So in the, just at around mid, the middle of the day on the 6th, as you can see on the left-hand side, the green line crosses the red line on the 60-minute momentum. We've got the momentum on the higher time frame also bearish. And we are watching price action as it tests into 
the 50% retracement and an ABC correction as highlighted by the um, extension tool that prints that uh, red line at 112.07. Okay, can everyone follow along here? I, I apologize that I haven't got the pointer here, but is, uh, can everyone follow along with, with what I'm saying? So what we're looking at is this move up above 112 and then we've got that bearish reversal Okay, let me uh, let me just pause this, and I will um, I will get uh, I'll get this this uh, pointer sorted out, guys. Just give me give me one minute here. Okay, guys, sorry about that. Can you see the screen now? I've, I'm going to have to do this in a slightly different way so that I can use um, a pointing tool here so it will make more sense. Let me just try and blow that up. Okay, I'm going to have to move. Can you see, uh, you can see the charts. If you can type a Y in the chat box just so you can let me know that you can still see the charts and you can now see my pointer on the screen. Great stuff. Okay. Apologies about that. Uh, we had a slight issue there with um, with the pointer. Okay. So let's uh, let's go back into this. So what we're looking at, if I move this across, this this is our our bearish reversal on the daily time frame. Okay. So here we had a bearish reversal as characterized by these two candles here, and this being our momentum uh, indicator, the stochastic RSI. That that this decline here. That we can see equates to this leg of downside in the in the price action. So we have this leg of downside. Notice how in this descent, price, the swings don't overlap. Okay, so we hold resistance, create support, hold resistance, create support, hold resistance, and so on until we make a swing low. After that swing low, price is advanced. We've made, got a low in our um, near-term momentum. So this is our near-term momentum on the hourly chart. Prices advance. We get a pullback. We've got here an A, B, an A, B, C target of 112 from this low. So versus the first pullback, once we've made our reaction low, as defined by this low here, we then look for an equidistant swing. So we're looking for this leg to basically be at a minimum replicated here to define when the correction on the shorter time frame is completed. We also have the FIB resistance in this area. And so what we're watching for is as price trades up into this area, do we get a bearish reversal? Okay, and we do get a bearish reversal. We have our short-term momentum over 
bought and turning bearish, whilst we have a higher time momentum, so as defined by this line here, this RO, a higher time for momentum, is also bearish. So now we have synchronicity on our lower time frame and a higher time frame. This trade, you can enter one pip below the low of the candle and put your stop one pip above the swing high. And then what you're doing is you already have a natural target because what we want to see is when prices retest the prior swing low, we will move our stop to our entry. So we take our, our risk out of the equation, our risk off the table, and we're ultimately going to target a move to the 127 extension of that leg of decline that we're tracking. Okay, so we've got momentum confirmation on the dual time frames. Let me just bring this down a touch. So we have momentum confirmation on the dual time frames, and then we get our signal by a bearish reversal candle as we trade into our potential price reversal zone. Okay, so we enter one pip below the low of the candle and we put our stop one pip above the swing high and we wait for prices to test down into the prior into the prior swing lows. This is 111.24 and we entered around 111.95. So we risked 20, 25 pips and we're all ready by the time we get back into the lows at 70 pips in profit. And then we, we once we trade into that low, we take our risk off the table. So we move our stops to our entry. OK, or we could trail our stops even further down above the last swing high, both in momentum and price. So we could trail our stops down to 111.70. So locking in some profit, depending upon our trade plan. What I'm trying to show you here are the multiple ways of managing these trades. And then we're waiting for price to trade down into our target of 109.36. And we get that trade into the 109.36. So there we're, we're taking away 140 odd pips of profit on a trade where we risk about 25 or 30 pips. Does that make sense to everyone? A why in the chat box if you followed what I'm saying there? Yeah, that's right. That's right, Irina, because what we're looking for, the overbought, what we're looking for here is we're looking for the stochastic to roll over. The stochastic RSI rolls over. So what we've got here, we've got on the higher time frame, the stochastic RSI has rolled over and the lines have now diverged to the downside, suggesting that there is further downside momentum ahead. This is an hourly reversal. OK, so what we're doing here is once the lines cross over, we've got confirmed by this bearish reversal inside candle here. That's our signal to join in with the, the potential for this new higher time frame trend. Does that make sense, Aruna? So what we're looking for, the, the, two, the, two, the two qualifiers are bearish and descending on the higher time frame. And bullish, overbought, bullish, overbought, but dis, but uh, with a bearish cross on the lower time frame. That gives us our entry signal, and then we manage the trade down through to the price swing low, where we can take our risk off the table, and then on through to our profit target, which is our one two seven extension. Let's look at another example. So this is the Swiss yen. Um, I posted this just last week. This setup. Uh, this is the, the daily chart where, which I use to give the, the signals and identify where the, the trend turns may be. And now let's look at it on the, on the shorter time frame chart. Okay, let's look at the short chart. So this is our signal setup on the daily time frame, the bullish reversal in the stochastic on the higher time frame. Okay, so we get a bullish reversal, We've got this big outside day candle on the higher time frame as denoted on the lower time frame by this price action, non-overlapping into a high, okay? Once we've got that high, we've confirmed by this bullish cross on our, our daily time frame momentum, we're then looking for a correction, and we're looking for that to be an A, B, C, into an equidistant swing target, meaning this leg will ideally be equal to that leg, and that, that equidistant swing requirement is a minimum requirement, 
it can exceed, but as a minimum, we want that equidistant swing, and we have a 50% retracement, all syncing up in and around this 111.44, 111.45 area. Then we get that bullish reversal from the candlestick pattern. We also get a bullish reversal in our lower time frame momentum. So again, higher time frame is bullish, uh, bullish and diverging to the upside. Lower time frame is bearish, has, has been down to test the, the bearish levels of the 20% the to the downside, and now is making a bullish reversal on the lower time frame, confirmed by some price action. So we enter our trade one pip above the high of that candle, so somewhere in the 111.55 area. Our stop just below, so let's say 111.35. So again, we're risking about 20 pips here. This is on an hourly chart, that's decent risk reward. Our first target is up at 112.01. So we're, we're taking about 45 pips. Once we get up to 45 pips, so about two times our risk reward, then we're going to move our stop to our entry level, and we're simply going to watch, can we trade up to the 127 extension? So again, what we're doing is we're removing our emotion from, the, from anything that's going on on the charts. We've defined objectively a higher time frame trend, a lower time frame entry in alignment with the higher time frame, using the same set of logic, and then we predefine risk parameters and predefine a target predefined when we're going to move our stops to entry and take our risk out of the market, okay? Unfortunately, again, in this instance, prices move up steadily and we trade to our target. So we risked about 30 pips on our entry. When we were, 40, uh, when we were 45 pips in profit, we took our stops off, we took our, our risk off the table and move our stops to entry. And then we traded up to 70, uh, to 112.30, so we had, uh, we had about 80 pips of profit, so about 2.5 times risk reward. Does that make sense for everyone? So this is our higher time frame here. This was the reversal pattern, reversal momentum. We waited, we watched, this, this, is, that, this is that move. We get the pullback, we get a corrective pattern, an ABC pattern into the Fibonacci support area. Price reverses, as does the stochastic RSI, and that triggers us into the trade up into the first target, risk off the table, and then our ultimate target, the 127 extension, giving us that 2.5 times risk reward. Okay, let's look at another one. So this is gold. At the end of last year, I talked about the potential for replicating patterns in gold, suggesting upside. Let's look at how we could have got into that trade. So we get our, our bearish reverse, uh, sorry, our bullish reversal here. Prices extend to the upside as defined by this move here. This is non-overlapping price action. It, it's suggesting a new trend developing. So we move to the upside. Once we get that swing high in place, we start to pull back and correct. So here's our first leg of correction. Prices overlap here. And then we're looking for a second leg, which I, as a minimum objective, we want to see an equidistant swing achieved. We trade down to the 68.1% uh, retracement area. And we enter the trade. Okay, so we get this, <coughs> we get prices test into this area. We enter one pip above the candle that tests into our um, tests into our support zone. Once we get the cross, the bullish momentum cross, we trade it, we triggered into the trade around one uh, around 1460, and we can use a stop just below the low there of about 1456. So we're risking five dollars here, uh, sorry, four dollars in uh, in the gold chart. And we're ultimately initially targeting the move up to retest the swing high, which we get. So by this stage, we're $25, uh, sorry, we're $15 in profit. We risk five. So we've already got a three to one working for us there. Now, um, I didn't have to, I couldn't, I can't, obviously these aren't live charts, so I can't scroll through, unfortunately, in this instance. But what I can tell you is that trade did get to risk free, but it did not move up because we got, you can see here on the daily chart, we actually got a deeper pullback. And that ultimately took us out of that trade, break even. So again, uh, we, we are not involved in trading to win every trade we forgot. We're involved in the markets because we have defined a high probability scenario that has a favorable risk reward parameter. And that's what we had here. Trade worked in the, initially, but then it, it, it didn't follow through to our target, but that's fine. We just move on and we look for our next setup. 
So here's another chart. This is the silver chart, again, posted around the same time where I identified a symmetry pattern in terms of uh, similar price action that pretended to be higher than silver. What did we get? Well, we got our rever bullish reversal here in silver as per the higher time frame momentum on the daily chart. So we got long, uh, sorry, we got a signal here, non-overlapping price action into a swing high. Then we made a bearish reversal, an A, B, C, D minimum requirement was met into the 38.2 cent retracement around 16.80. And then we spiked up into our risk-free, so our, our profit, uh, we take our risk off the table at that stage, that was up into 16.90. And then we spiked into our take profit at the 1709 level. So there's another trade, very favorable risk reward. We look, we have a logical set of rules that we're following as predefined. We, the trade trigger meets our entry criteria. And we, like I say, we spike higher. Ultimately, we pull back, um, but our trade had already finished by then because we've met our profit objective. Okay, let's look at another one. So now we're moving into some, some more recent examples. This is the S&P chart that I just posted yesterday, okay? And what I'm looking for now, I, I, I see the potential at this stage due to um, some other technical factors and some sentiment factors that we could be moving into a corrective phase in the S&P 500. I do not think the world's coming to an end and the S&P is going to, S &P is going to crash. What I do think is there's a the potential for a, a correction to develop. Now, this is the this is well, this is the chart just before I signed on today. Now, here's what I'll be looking for going forward with this with this chart. So this is something you guys can track now in real time as this market potentially develops. I have a a, a target reversal zone at the current level, so from 3300 up to around 3320, 3330. I am looking for a bearish reversal. So I will need the green line to cross the red and come ideally get back down below this 80% level, okay? And then what I'm going to be watching for on this chart is a decline in the shorter time frame, and then I'll be looking for an A, B, C, D correction and the secondary high in this momentum. So I'll be looking for momentum to come down, then make a secondary high while this is still diverging to the downside. And that will potentially be a signal for me to get into that short trade in the S&P. Okay. So that's what I'm watching now, real time for the S&P 500. What I'll do um, is I'll post potentially, actually I'll post on the um, on the Ticknell blog going forward. I'll continue to track this pattern for you and I'll, um, I'll post some updates on there as this pattern potentially plays out. Is it definitely going to play out? Hell no. But if it does, using this strategy, I'll show you in real time or as close to real time as I can, how this strategy works um, for, for you to enter that trade using a relatively low risk reward with a pretty high profit potential. Now, let's just close up with a couple of uh, other examples. This is a trade I've been in this week in the euro dollar. So the euro dollar has got this bullish reversal on the daily chart. We've got some outside candles developing. And this non-overlapping price, it's overlapping slightly, but sufficient um, to, to look for a, a corrective trade uh, co to enter a correction. We've got an ABCD. We exceeded the equidistant swing target. We trade down into the 61.8% retracement. And we've got this bullish reversal on the hourly time frame. So I put on a trade, I entered one pip above the high here around 112.50 uh, 50 I got in, and my stop just below the low there at 111. So I risked about, uh, sorry, 112, 111.25. So again, I risked about 30 pips, and I'm currently running about a 30 pip profit. I've come just, uh, I've come just shy, I didn't get a fill here, on the uh, on the take profit target prior to coming onto the webinar, maybe I did get a fill after that. This uh, I didn't get a fill here, so I'm looking for this uh, 111.63 to trade to take me out of that trade for uh, for a profit there. That's a real time example. That's just this week of how this strategy works. Bullish reversal on the daily time frame. Then we got this uh, we got this 
swing high, correction into this low on the hourly time frame. We met the minimum requirements, traded 61.8% retracement, bullish reversal, bullish reversal on the hourly momentum. That set us up on the long side of the trade's working well. Now, here's one also you can watch um, that I'm going to be tracking going forward. I'll, po I'll put this, probably put this up as the, the chart of the day um, today or tomorrow. Uh, we've had an extension in the Kiwi, the uh, New Zealand dollar to the upside, so non-overlapping price action. We're getting a bullish reversal in the daily momentum. Okay. Now what I'll be looking for over the coming sessions will be an ABCD correct, uh, sorry, an ABC correction into somewhere around this 50, 61.8% retracement area. I'll be looking for momentum to be below the 20 level, but pointing to the upside, bullish, bullish reversal in momentum. And that will be a signal to get long in the Kiwi dollar. Okay, guys, that's, um, that covers pretty much everything I wanted to, to share with you today uh, regarding multi time frame analysis. I apologize for um, the slight inconvenience there with respect to the pointer. We'll, uh, we'll have that sorted out for, for next week. Um, I'm just going to take a quick sip of water and I've got, uh, I've got about five minutes here if any of you guys have any questions about anything we've, uh, we've discussed today. Feel free to type in the chat um, and I'll, uh, I'll answer as, as best I can in the next few minutes. Uh, Aruna, does the reversal have to be in the overbought? Ideally, um, when you're starting out, Aruna, with this strategy, that's the to 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 remove uh, to remove object. So, sorry, to remove subjectivity, you're better off at least having the fast line touch the 20 points on the downside or touch the 80 point on the upside, just to give you, to, to take away the, the, the subjectivity from it in the early days. Once you start to, once you become familiar with the strategy and you, you train your eye and you've got, um, you've got a bunch of, of, of screen time with it, you'll start to understand um, how you, uh, you'll start to understand alternative entry strategies. Um, but that, those are additional rules that you'll build into your plan over time. When you're starting out, I'd use the 80-20 the levels just to give you that sub, uh, objectivity, Aruna. Uh, how do you combine our Sarah? The stochastic RSI is a standard indicated, uh, indicator, Francis, for, um, for most platforms. Any other questions, guys? <clears throat> Uh, I'll be looking at weekly or monthly. Um, if you're trading a daily, I suggest the monthly. What I what I like to do is skip a time frame, basically, because you'll find that the daily chart and the monthly chart synchronize better than the daily and the weekly. There'll be too, there'll be um, there'll be some there'll be too many conflicts. And if you're for those who are less experienced, that will just confuse you. You're better off just using uh, skipping a time frame to give a, a smoother signal. Yeah, on MT4, you can get that, Francis. Thank you, Jabs. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap this one up here. And um, next week, we will uh, we'll be looking at um, some pattern recognition. Started to touch on some of those patterns today with the ABC. Um, but next week, we'll go into a bit more detail about these patterns. And we'll put some... Um, some objective uh, rules around how to identify them and so you can start to build up your knowledge level and uh, start to see how these strategies pull together. Thanks very much for your time guys, I hope you enjoyed the session, I'll catch you all next week.